Okay, this is going to be how to perform, how to calculate an acid-base titration. So, so, a few things to know about a titration. First of all, it's used to determine an unknown concentration when using a known concentration. It involves a neutralization reaction between an acid and a base. It uses a color changing indicator. And uh, for one particular indicator, bromothymol blue, it has a transition interval of 6.2 to 7.6. So that's the pH when the color change happens. A pH meter can be used for a more accurate reading. And then when hydronium and hydroxide are in, e are in equal amounts, then you've reached the equivalence point of the titration. Finally, the end point is recognized when the, P the indicator's color changes. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to perform the calculation. So here's our sample calculation number one. Notice what we're given. First of all, we're given 54 milliliters of a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Here I have the balanced equation, and under sodium hydroxide, I'm going to put that we have a 0.1 molar solution and that we have 54 milliliters worth. I also have in my problem 125 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, and the question is, what is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid? So this means I'm trying to determine the molarity of the hydrochloric acid and I have 125 milliliters worth. So in my problem, sodium hydroxide is my known concentration and hydrochloric acid is my unknown concentration. So first we're going to start with our known concentration and our first step is going to be to determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide using molarity equals moles over liter. And so I'm going to take these two quantities and I'm going to plug them into my equation. 0.1 molar equals, I don't know the number of moles, and I'm going to put my liters, or rather milliliters, at the bottom. We're going to use milliliters throughout the problem because later on the units will cancel out. So we don't have to change it from milliliters to liters. So to solve this, I'm going to multiply 0.1 times 54, and that's going to give me 5.4, and that's going to be millimoles of sodium hydroxide. The second step is going to be to stoic from our known to the unknown. I'm going to use this quantity to start my next step where I'm going to put 5.4 millimoles of sodium hydroxide over 1. Times draw a line, bring down millimoles of sodium hydroxide. And here's where we want to stoic. So we'll go back up to the original equation and we want to stoic from our sodium hydroxide over to our hydrochloric acid. Notice that there's a 1 to 1 ratio for both of these. So we're going to go to millimoles of hydrochloric acid. It's a 1 to 1 ratio. And when we calculate this, we get 5.4 millimoles of hydrochloric acid. The last step is going to involve using the 125 milliliters of hydrochloric acid so that we can find the molarity. So step number three determine the molarity of the unknown and we're going to do that by taking this amount molarity is going to equal 5.4 millimoles of hydrochloric acid divided by the 125 milliliters given to us in the original problem and when we divide these, we get 0 0.043 molar hydrochloric acid.
is our final answer. Sample problem number two, and I'm going to do a bit less writing in this one, just focus on how to do the math. So we are given 25 milliliters of a 0.05 molar hydrochloric acid solution, and it neutralizes 345 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. What is the concentration of sodium hydroxide? So we have 0.05 molar and 25 milliliters. We don't know the molarity of sodium hydroxide and we have 345 milliliters. So this is our unknown this time and this is our known. Okay, we always want to start with the known concentration so we're going to take First, 0 0.05 molar times the 25 milliliters, and that's going to give us our millimoles, which equals 1.25 millimoles of hydrochloric acid. Next, we're going to take our 1.25 millimoles of hydrochloric acid, we're going to put it over 1 bring down the millimoles of hydrochloric acid and we're going to stoic from hydrochloric acid to sodium hydroxide. Notice that it's a one to one ratio. So millimoles of sodium hydroxide at a one to one ratio is going to equal 1.25 millimoles of sodium hydroxide. Finally, our third step we're going to want to use this quantity with this quantity in order to determine our molarity. So molarity will equal 1.25 millimoles of sodium hydroxide over 345 milliliters. And when we divide these, we get 0.036 molar sodium hydroxide. Last example, number three. In the problem we have 50 milliliters of a 0.5 molar potassium hydroxide solution. It neutralizes 125 milliliters of sulfuric acid. What is sulfuric acid's concentration? So what's different about this problem is when we balance the equation, we end up with a 1, 2, 2, 1 ratio. So we have 2 moles of potassium hydroxide to 1 mole of sulfuric acid. We are given 0.5 molar and 50 milliliters of potassium hydroxide. What is the molarity when you have 125 milliliters of sulfuric acid? Okay, this is our known, this is our unknown. You always want to start with the known, so we're going to start by taking 0.5 molar times 50 milliliters to get our moles of potassium hydroxide. This is going to equal 25 millimoles of potassium hydroxide. Then we're going to take our 25 millimoles put it over 1 and we're going to stoic from potassium hydroxide over to sulfuric acid. Notice this time it's a 2 to 1 ratio, so it's going to make a difference this time. We have 2 millimoles of potassium hydroxide to 1 millimole of sulfuric acid. So when we do 25 divided by 2, we get 12.5 millimoles of sulfuric acid. Finally, I'm going to take my millimoles of sulfuric acid and the milliliters of sulfuric acid given to determine the molarity. Molarity will equal 12.5 millimoles of sulfuric acid divided by 125 milliliters and that gives us 0.1 molar sulfuric acid.